plus 10. And now we've got the D4 book. Second warning session. My name is Karl Zuma, University of Mainz in Germany. In total, we have three papers, two leading the Andrews MC41, you might be sick and tired to hear it, but nevertheless, it's quite interesting information. And then we will start with the final discussion around 12.10. So I ask the first speaker, Dr. Nuni, from the King's College of London. So we did some X-ray analysis using X-ray signal radiation um, at the Desert Laboratory, and uh, basically this is very bright polarized light from the X-ray region to the uh, infrared. And um, the advantages are tunable wavelength, high photon flux, and good signal to noise ratio. Also, you can obtain in situ experiments, but we're not going to show these here. Picture, brief, quick picture of um, Desbury Laboratory. That's the. Uh, this is where they, uh, the synchrotron stations are housed, and there's an uh, electron beam which circulates around here at speeds close to the uh, speed, <coughs> speed of light. And uh, I just like to point out in the background, there's a small church where um, Lewis Carroll was uh, brought up. <laughs> So, I 
I've shown you some MCL 41 calcine samples using a new template. This is C12, C16 chain length, and um, C16 with mesotylene added. Um, you can see that the intensity in the counts is quite high at 5,000, 10,000. And um, you can see that the pore size has increased. And also, interestingly, is the, the intensity is also increasing. So we're getting more brag reflections as we increase the pore size. Um, on the right hand side, we have um, some displays against templates for um, hexagonal mesoporous silica, with, with, which has been calcined and with the aluminium added and also with titanium added. You can see there's a general increase in the pore size. Um, we have an unusual pore size here. We need to do some further work. And um, at the, when, we, when we add high amounts of mesotylene, the uh, pore size for the titanium and the uh, calcine sample is slightly lower. So we've done some solid state magic angle spinning on aluminium incorporated 1% in uh, MCM41. Uh, basically, if it's in E1, it shows aluminium in uh, octahedral coordination, sorry, that one, and P2 is aluminium in tetrahedral coordination. Generally, if aluminium is in tetrahedral coordination, then it's been isomorphously substituted into the framework of the silica, and it could be used for, you could have uh, Bronson or Lewis acid activity. So you can see that in all cases with C12 through to C16, chain lengths and added mesotylene, we have the, the aluminium that's been incorporated reasonably well. Um, with high amounts of mesotylene added, the uh, tetrahedral coordination is quite, quite a high percentage, so these could be used possibly in catalysis. I think uh, Konaski and co-workers have actually um, done some FTIR on their uh, bronsted acid and Lewis acid sites. So we, we have uh, some FTR spectra of different MCM41 compounds. Um, we've noticed in the asymmetric stretching region that on the calcination of MCM41 using the quaternary ammonium template, that you get a, a small uh, shift in the band here. And um, this would indicate that there is some sort of uh, some uh, silica network rearrangement on calcination. Uh, for the HMS compounds, this was not observed, so possibly these are more stable compounds. We have some F Fourier transfer infrared spectra of uh, HMS before and after calcination. Um, the, the spectrum on the left shows uh, hexagonal mesoporous silica. Before calcination, you can notice this. Uh, see a stretching band from the uh, template inside the pores, and after calcination, this disappears, and we get a silanol group forming here, which shows that there's uh, an increase in, in the number of uh, hydroxide groups on the surface after um, calcination, which you would expect. Um, another uh, region of the spectrum, we've observed uh, a shoulder here, but this hasn't been commented on before. But I've read some papers, there was a paper by uh, um, Kamitsos in Greece who assigned this to a skeletal deformation of the fourfold um, siloxane ring. And this is quite interesting because uh, Stucky and co workers said that the mechanism for the formation of uh, um, MCM41 was possibly through these uh, deforming oligomers precipitating on the surface of the template. So this would possibly provide some evidence of uh, um, skeleton of uh, these fourfold siloxane rings. We have some uh, selective, we've done some selective absorption work using gas chromatography mass spectrometry, and um, the graph on the left shows uh, CO2 CH4 absorption on uh, MCM41. And as you can see, the um, MCM41 is selective for um, CO2. Um, on the right is a graph of the uh, absorption 
for um, isobutane and CO2 on MCM41, you can see that the selectivity is being reversed in this case. Um, we, th we think that this is probably because um, isobutane has more branched methyl groups, obviously, than um, methane, and uh, could therefore interact with more van der Waals fluid wall sites, bind more strongly to the surface. We've also performed some uh, palladium MCM41 catalysis on, uh, on our MCM41 samples. And these were, the preparation was using um, ammonium exchange and then incipient wetness impregnation using a, a palladium nitrate precursor. And uh, we added 0.25, 0 0.512% 0 of palladium. And the samples were then dried or calcined. Um, should be said that we've also performed some work on radium samples as well, but these will not, not give us such good results. So we looked at um, the hexane hydrogenation to hexane, and for 0.51% and 2% palladium catalysts, we, we observed 100% conversion with a 100% selectivity towards hexane, but in the uh, 0.25% the case, the palladium catalyst only showed 80% conversion of 97% selectivity towards hexane um, and 3% selectivity towards cis and trans to hexane isomers. So we've uh, some further we've done some further work using uh, temperature programmed reduction. Basically, this is a comic representation. Um, we take, you take your catalyst and you oxidize it in, uh, in air first at uh, elevated temperatures. And then you add hydrogen gas to reduce further with heat. And you get a uh, Garfield here who's so being reduced. Uh, so at the bottom, you can see our, our results for the hydrogen consumption against temperature for the flavor catalyst at 0.25. 0.5, 1 and 2 percent. Um, basically, we observed that we only had um, 30 percent hydrogen consumption of the theoretical maximum. So we assume that a lot of the palladium is being reduced at subambient temperatures. Um, so this would suggest that the, uh, the palladium is very accessible in, in the MCM41, which you would expect for a um, uh, material of high surface area. Um, so we need to do some subambient work. This in the future. <coughs> We've also performed some Grand Canal from Monte Carlo simulations of NT absorption in terms of CM41 using uh, fixed pressure, temperature, and volume. We performed uh, 2,200,000 steps, and the uh, Lenny Jones 12.6 interaction potential was used. The model we used was uh, generated on uh, MCM40, but uh, it was generated on Sirius 2 software. Um, basically, it has P6 symmetry, um, and the D10 plane is 3.5 nanometers. Seems across here. And the wall thickness is 11.2 nanometers. And the pore radius is 1.46 nanometers. We used these values, which compare very well with um, work by uh, experimental results by Ralph Schmidt and uh, co-workers. So here's the comparison between simulation and experiment. The uh, simulated results are the open circles and the uh, experimental results are the closed circle. The uh, inflection of uh, capillary condensation was, uh, in fact, we observed the same position, but our period condensation is much broader. Um, we've adjusted the parameters of the, in the Leonard Jones potential, um, but uh, we, we, could, we couldn't obtain, we only obtained um, a steeper gradient in the period condensation that, uh, using unrealistic, um, 
on the realistic values for the sigma, simpler value in the uh, let me change the potential. So here are some of the uh, points at the bottom. Uh, mass distribution diagram, we've, we've got these on series 2 as well. So we've got uh, partial pressures of 0 0.1 you can see one layer absorption and 0 0.8 curly layer uh, absorption gets uh, a series of concentric circles for the nitrogen absorption. So in summary, um, we can say that the poor aperture increase in template tamate for aluminium and titanium incorporated compounds. Um, the palladium catalyst shows high conversion percentages that observe to reduce the subambient temperatures. Um, well, good agreement was observed in the uh, in the inflection point for the um, onset of capillary condensation, but so you could say that simulation experiments for this option of N2 into N41 were reasonably good. More questions? Yes, from my mom. Actually, I can comment on the answer because from the south, it's not for the operations, the comparison with exerted impression, it would be possible also to obtain sickness of protocol. And for all the samples, we can you speak in the mic?
the circuits. Still, that's uh, not a problem. But we didn't do any work. We already organized it. Yeah, there's a question. Dr. the shoot, please. Just, Can you? Just a comment. We prepared palladium samples in a similar way, and using this procedure, we get a viable size distribution of small particles around 1.5 to 2 nanometers and big particles on the external surface. You can see that with T and X ray uh, line drawing analysis. And our procedure is similar to your procedure, so it's probably the same. Thank you. Well, there are no more questions. Thank you again. And we move on to the next speaker. It's a contribution from the CMS, Marseille. Professor Robert Rose, the speaker is uh, Dr. Rebellion.